Welcome to OFFO Studio. My guest for today is Ishita Sharma. Ishita is a corporate lawyer who specializes in data privacy and compliance. Ishita, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Angad. It's great to have you here. Why don't you start by telling people about yourself? Okay. So, I am the co-founder of Fathom Legal Advocates and Corporate Consultants. Uh did my law graduation PLLB honors from National Law University Visakhapatnam. Went on to Harvard University to study IPR. Right. Came back, started my firm. What's IPR? Like a lot of people okay. that don't uh. Okay. Basic question. So IPR is like intellectual property rights. Okay. Every person may own it. Right. Right. Especially the entrepreneurs who are creating products, devices, yeah. services, right? Yeah. It can start from your logo to your brand image okay. to a new uh, concept or a design that you're creating, mm -hmm. right? A new technology that you're creating. Everything is protected by the IPR. That's the intellectual property laws. Yeah. Now, these laws expand from the state, mm -hmm. in what state you're uh, practicing them, to the national or international boundaries, wherever you want to extend them. Got right? it. So the IPR is extremely essential at, as it makes a part of your asset. A long time asset. Okay. okay. It it can be something that you can pass on to generations. Right, right, right. So this is one kind of wealth that entrepreneurs know about it and like to invest into it. Right. But there's still there's still an end to it, right? Like 100 years or something. I don't know. I might be wrong. Yes. Okay. Yes. There is definitely an end to it. So two generations at max you can pass it on. <laughs> Depends on what kind of IPR it is. Okay, okay. Not for all of them. All right. Well, what are the different kinds? So when, when you talk about patents, mm -hmm. right? Once you've used it for a max period, it has to come out to the public domain because the information has to be used at large okay. for the larger good of the public. Okay. That's the intention and the idea behind the law. Okay. 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 And but when it comes to trademarks, uh -huh. right, you can own them. Okay. Okay. And you can keep passing them on. Got it. So when you sell it, it becomes the other person's. Got it. So how have you seen this landscape evolve? Because like I I think in the last thirty or forty years, right, there's been there has been so much disruption in this space about like, you know, about the boundaries. They, they've all been blurred now. Mm -hmm. How have you seen the evolution come to be? With respect to the IPRs, yeah. uh, firstly, people did not have much knowledge. Right. Right. Slowly and steadily, steadily we are seeing the culture of startups coming up, people investing in their ideas. Right. Right market promoting uh, new ideas right. and especially the, I would call it the advent of COVID where people were left idle yeah. and they got their, you know, all the time and energy to focus on what they've been wanting to for long. Right. Right. So uh, a lot has been invested in the IPR state and good thing about our law in our country is it, it does protect you. Okay. Unlike, unlike other countries. Hmm. So uh, when you file for your trademark mm -hmm. or your copyright, yeah. right. And you, you can sleep peacefully that if somebody copies it the yeah. next day, you can shoot them a notice, uh -huh. right? And you will get the protection. Got it. Unlike in other countries where people can go on for a long battle. That's yeah. not the case here. Okay. Here it is shortened and the law is genuinely protective plus the fees is not very high. Yes. The government is making it affordable for all of us so that they can promote. So earlier the, this case was not such. For, uh, first of all, there was not much awareness. Right. Right. And now the landscape has evolved so much that things are happening cross border. And as and when you want to expand, mm -hmm. right, you need to first protect your assets. Right. Because you're in a threat of being, you know, stolen, your brand image being stolen, your logo being stolen. So, so these are like basics of any business to get started. Right. So now people are aware and they are practicing it at length. Got it. Got it. Oh, what's the difference between a trademark and a copyright? So, uh, a trademark is for logos okay. and brand image. Copyright is for the written work. So, various forms of works have various various forms, uh, forms of protection. Okay. Written work, as in writing, poetry, Got it. prose. So, that can be copyrighted. Yeah. But and your logos and uh, graphics. That has to be trademarked. Trademark. And if there's any design, then that, there'll be a design mark. There are multiple categories. The whole uh, pool is huge. Okay. The okay. signatures can be signature marked. Oh, <laughs> Your patent technology can be patented. Hmm. How you are creating this mic that can be patented. Right, right. So the pool is vast. Let's say someone takes a picture, right? And then they get a copyright over that picture. Mm -hmm. I take the same subject mm -hmm. and take a similar looking picture. Mm -hmm. Am I infringing on that person's no. copyright? No. No, you're similar. It's not same. It has to be same. Depends on a lot of things, Angar. Okay, all right. <laughs> it depends on a lot. I, I, I'm sure I can't explain it to you that way. I'll have to see the picture, make the differences. Yeah, yeah. So a lot. 
the color the design the font the size so it has to yeah is it deceiving the intent of the lawyer is is it deceiving by by the way that i look at it and i see oh this is the one that angad clicked is right. it that one right 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 if it is exactly similar then no you might not get it but if there is even a iota of difference yeah. that people can spot it out then you will get it so there are various categories classes under trademarks and copyrights okay can you share some anecdotes or some stories around around these oh, okay <laughs> okay so one of my clients uh, won't mention their name mm-hmm. they are restaurant owners okay in delhi okay very famous restaurant famous for their biryani so uh, it was so much so that people used to queue outside their restaurants every evening mm-hmm. and they were into some social service also so at the end of the night uh, when whatever food was left there was another queue for the right now that with time it became so famous that there were at least six other restaurants in the same name same board same brand name same yeah. logo just same. around that <laughs> restaurant only yeah 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 okay and that was you know hampering a lot of business of my client true true yeah okay so he actually got perturbed because they were actually creating their own masalas and that's what that was their usp when people used to travel long so yeah. as soon as they enter that area the first restaurant that they see with the similar name they enter that huh. so Yeah, that was obviously like that was it actually hampers your business of, of course i mean i wouldn't know like if i just go over there with a the name in my mind and if the location is around that yeah I, like you go to lucknow you go to tunde kababi yeah, right yeah. and you will find 20 of them yeah. and then you come back with a feedback oh it's overhyped yeah, yeah. it wasn't good yeah. you actually are never able to reach the right place right okay so yeah we did shoot five legal notice uh huh and we were successful shutting down four of them oh wow <laughs> so that's what i told you it works because the impact of the law is such that if you fail to do so uh we would charge you we'll charge you back legally and that would cost you heavily got it got it okay let, let's shift focus to yeah, tech to what yeah yeah from food to tech all right so when it comes to say uh so most of our partners tend to be saas b2b companies right what are some essentials that they should take care of if they are going public with any of their ideas their ideas yeah let's say let's say they've they've got like a uh they've built, built their own saas platform right mm. it's it's their own intellectual property how how do they go about like what what are the steps that they should take in order to ensure that it does not get misused or copied idea cannot be protected ideas cannot be protected Okay what what if it's just like a fully functioning platform it's a software like you know it... then you can you know protect elements of it okay you can protect elements of it and you can uh, if if at all it gets copied okay right you will have the first movers advantage yeah okay that's protected under law you will have the first movers advantage and then you need to show hmm. with your paperwork that you've done okay this was my logo this was my brand name this is how i moved in this is where, where uh, we moved in first we pitched them first yeah. and this on this day we created our platform on this day we booked our domain so in total you have to explain that how this was your idea first Got how it. you moved ahead with it first so document everything yes document everything from the scratch that's why we say that lawyers are extremely important but techies don't understand <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> right. so document trademark copyright keep keep documenting everything keep taking licenses okay right. small expenses but are going to you know benefit you heavily in the long run of course of course but ideas cannot be protected please keep it aside so don't just talk about it openly even i i i attend a lot of networking event and then people just you know they're coming out and telling the ideas in total i'm like what are you doing i can go and copy it you will right. be able to do anything right right so they this is my idea will you be able to help me i said i will help myself first i like <laughs> Oh okay how, how do you so should should we not talk about ideas you then? should not explain the nitty gritties okay not not the nitty gritty people okay. say it's not uh, very easy to copy someone's idea okay because you know the actual step by step plan is in their head right everything is too advanced and fast moving of course yeah, yeah okay yeah. and people are not slow these days yeah. they know how to catch up okay True. so when you have given broad strokes or broad layouts okay I think uh, some certain patches can be filled in by reading a bit more. Okay. Okay. So if I tell you something about today and it interests you, mm-hmm. you might go ahead and fill in the blanks or maybe talk to the industry experts and go ahead partner with someone and just do it. So I just tell people not to give a lot of information as to what you're doing unless you're protected and out there. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So let, let's say I'm starting up today, right? I've got an idea and I'm I'm starting to build it too. Mm-hmm. I want to be compliant from day zero. 
what what all things should i take care of so if a new business owner comes to us to our firm so the first step that we take is to recommend the kind of entity that they would require okay. to be created okay so what are the different kind i'll of tell it? you okay. i'll tell you so there are multiple kind of entities right. i was exactly coming to that yeah. okay uh, depart, uh, depending upon the capital that you are willing to invest and the scalability of that you are seeking since okay. inception so we it's it's like an opc one person company mm-hmm. llp limited liability partnership mm-hmm. plain simple partnership okay private limited entities okay, okay. and a proprietorship of course which is similar to opc <clears throat> now these are the kind of entities that you can create depending upon the business size that you're looking for mm-hmm. now for a, we suggest private limited entities only to those who are uh, who are first of all determined right. experienced who have at least capital enough to take care of the uh, government compliances ministry of corporate affairs compliances regulatory compliances secretarial compliances accounting compliances right okay so that is also cost intensive i mean you need a company secretary or lawyer and a ca handy right right right, right 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 so you should have at least that much in your coffers okay right. so any which way is a private limited entity is the best entity to form if you are doing some serious business that's okay. also the most expensive most expensive one and has the most acceptance in the market of course yes hmm. it develops most trust right for investors and right. people right right but if you are a consultant or a service provider you need not form a private limited entity not required hmm. if you are in a product product based industry private limited would be good for you if you are seeking to raise funds private limited would be the best for you okay. but if you know service based industries like lawyers cscs you usually form partnerships right or proprietorships of firms Hmm. it is going to be a close knit setup of course yeah mostly so that is one form then there is proprietorship wherein you are the sole proprietorship of the entity uh, and you are mostly a solopreneur or uh, not a solopreneur you are mostly a person who is running it independently without any collaborations of other co-founders so for a, for a private limited minimum two directors are necessary it can go up to 200 okay 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 but for uh, again for a partnership minimum two go up to 20 plus mm-hmm. and but for a proprietorship or a one person company if you're a single entity you can choose these two sectors so this is the first compliance okay right next we ask them for their logo mm-hmm. brand name right set so, and the third thing we ask them to protect them under the ipr laws okay. right the trademarks mm-hmm. the brand marks being protected then they get a domain okay create their own personal ids and hence on and hence for these are the basic standards that they set up to get started what else do we do oh yes then we talk about the uh, internal framework of the company okay setting up their hiring firing regulations mm-hmm. right making their comp- uh, with the kind of the product that they deal with whether they are taking in user data yeah or not making sure that they are gdpr compliant now with the uh, data protection bill making sure that they are data protection compliant pro- pro- making policies for them Mm-hmm. right privacy policies cookie policies and things like that so that's the entire startup starter kit that we have that right. we serve as a as lawyers to startups to make sure that they are covered from scratch from start till the end so there's a lot to it all right mm-hmm. so which of those responsibilities are covered by lawyers and which ones are covered by chartered accountants and ccs so accountings uh, with respect to your uh, so the cs files some gst bills mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. that's what they are filing every uh, you know third month even mm-hmm. the accountants can do so a lot of responsibilities are overlapping right 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 so uh, you might not see a lawyer in a company but you will definitely see a ca of course of course everywhere yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so ca they happen to venture into all of them and things and only when there is a dispute they would like to call a lawyer right but that's not a case ca is highly unlikely to get give you the right guidance for incorporating your company okay okay so that's what lawyers do they get your companies incorporated corporate lawyers not the uh, dispute uh, corporate yeah yeah not the dispute resolution lawyers hmm. okay so we are a team of cscs and lawyers so we are like a complete package try to provide one stop solution okay but a lot of roles are overlapping so the accounting part is done by the cas okay where they take care of the books they take care of the entries okay we have one accountant not necessarily a ca mm-hmm. uh, in these companies who will take care on their software what are the entries coming in and going out yeah, yeah. right then the ca takes care of the ministry ministerial filings like agt4 mgt7 these are certain forms that needs to be filed to with the ministry of corporate affairs okay okay mm. six monthly biannually 
things like that so from starting up this all of this should be taken care of yeah okay. if you're forming a private limited okay let's say i'm forming a private limited in india but i also have plans of selling it in other countries or selling my product in other countries or services for example the us what are some more things that i should be careful about so that would be export of service okay 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 mm-hmm. so now uh, mostly people you either do it through some medium like some freelancing portal depending if you're what a lot depends upon the size of your company okay okay so then there is a person in between a portal in between who takes care of the compliances like upwork or freelancer right right, right. if you're doing it on your independent independent level you might need an import export code sometimes ic code okay okay yeah okay so actually it, the sim, uh, i was stuck in a similar situation okay myself yeah so i was looking into it and uh, in that case also there is no great difference you just have to take care of uh, that you are compliant with the ic format the import and export format and then to, um, with respect to the fu- funds that are concerned how you are taking them in and that you should be able to establish the routes got from it. where they are coming and what it is for so your paperwork again your paper trail has to be very clear got it got it because there should be a purchase order because since now you have an eic okay import right. export code there should be a purchase order from yeah. your client maybe that he is raising a request for a In, you know a request a purchase order that he wants this is this kind of a service or this is this kind of product from your entity got it okay got and then it. you do a proper delivery hmm. right and then he raises an invoice yeah there has to be complete paper trail so that it's back because you know remittance is yeah. heavily heavily monitored by the government of india yes hmm. inward and outward both hmm. so whenever you're dealing with international jurisdictions you have to be really careful on that part so again it depends upon what volumes you are doing okay how okay. frequently you're doing if it is a one time transaction or three time transaction it's an every day transaction so that's where we come up with a legal expertise and legal advisory on day to day basis got it and like you said if you're doing it through a platform like say upwork then, then that's not an issue they take message. care of they take care of everything they have their detailed policies set they okay. make sure both the parties sign it hmm. and they make sure that both the parties are compliant right. and they take their cut and they pay the both the parties and make sure that the delivery is done on time car so ofo for does the exact same thing for cyber security service providers we are a platform that can take care of it end to end you don't really need to worry about you not being compliant when selling your services in external markets all right all right so again even in india things have shuffled up a bit right uh, since the launch of the dpdp bill mm-hmm. right so h- how has that changed things Okay, so people are praising DPDP. I mean, I believe that the set it is divided into two sets. Okay. okay. In the legal industry, I don't know what others, but within the legal industry and the legal luminaries, it is divided into two sets. But before you know entering into this discussion, I would like to explain what are the stakeholders and what. Yes, please. Yeah. Right. Who are the stakeholders who actually get affected by this law? Mm-hmm. Right. And what would be their responsibilities? Right. Right. So first of all the first stakeholder under this bill that has been defined are data principals. Okay. Okay. So who are data principals? Data principals are those people who are actually giving their information. With you, consent. Me. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. So anybody can be a data principal whoever is logging in their information right? Yeah. On their websites or wherever in the bank using credit cards, right? Then the second stakeholder is the data fiduciary. Okay. That's a term given to the person who is collecting the data. got it got right. it so in case here ofo ofo might be a data fiduciary mm-hmm. right because you might be processing a lot of data from one yeah. place to another yeah and then using it for specific purposes right right so now the third stakeholder is data processors mm-hmm. so the data fiduciary collects the data but you know outsources it or gives it to the third party to process it in the xyz manner right so that stakeholder has been called data processor okay now the entire ecosystem is managed by consent managers okay okay, okay. Mm-hmm. they are the fourth stakeholder okay okay and consent managers are they who 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 are they appointed by okay. by the board okay okay all right yeah now if anything goes wrong in this entire cycle mm-hmm. all each party is responsible to con- to file a complaint to the data protection board a data protection board is a board that has been constituted under the law data personal so the data protection law yeah okay now these are the four five stakeholders 
Now, understand earlier uh, under the Information Technology Act 2000 or the 2008, uh, there was no such responsibilities enumerated on each of them. Firstly, there was no classification. Right. So in India, there is one big problem. Hmm. There is no consolidated law to protect cybersecurity. We are okay. very divided. Okay. We, okay. Now, in the form of IT laws, mm -hmm. that is separate. Now, each section is performing separately. Now we right. have DPDP, then we have CRTIN. Which is, certain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right. That is a, again another quote. Hmm. So there is no such consolidated law right yeah. now. Like right now, they are trying to consolidate the criminal laws. Like two years ago, they consolidated all the labor laws. You know, India had eighteen labor laws. Wow. Eighteen labor laws, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. they consolidated it. It's difficult to implement. Of course. With a lot of diversity. Right. Right. So same. So this is an evolving structure, right? Hmm. The cybersecurity space is evolving. The Technology is evolving with passing time, correct? Yeah. So, accordingly, the law is evolving. The problem with the government sector is they do not have industry experts yeah. to recommend them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, while this law was being developed, we had foreign influence. I'll, I'll give the resource also, that person who had, you know, done the comparative study mm -hmm. across the globe about the... Uh, cyber security laws and the data protection laws. Okay. Okay. And he was on one of the board members while the DPDP Act was being framed. Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we, as within the nation, we we lack experts. We are still evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So due to the lack of consolidation, there is no set format or set prescription. Though they are trying to do it, mm -hmm. but there is still a lot of evolution left. So under this framework, for the first time ever, the responsibilities have been assigned. To each stakeholder. Okay. Which is one great development. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So the data principles. Okay. The ones who are giving the data. Have the responsibility to provide the correct data. Okay. They cannot falsificate the data. Hmm. They cannot impersonate somebody else. Right. 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 Or somebody who is not in the capacity. To you know. Write on their behalf. Yeah. Okay. Girls like me who are young, they are hesitant to give their entire information. Of course. They have a threat of being stopped. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. In that case, it is your responsibility. How do you want to take it ahead? You Do you trust the system or not? Or refrain from it in totality yes. is what the law prescribes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in case there is a falsification of data from your end, there is a penalty of rupees 10,000. Okay. Right. Now let's talk about data fiduciaries. Mm -hmm. If they are lacking to protect the sensitive information of children hmm. and they have defaulted. Yeah. The penalty extends to 200 crores. Oh my God. Right. Hmm. Like that's revolutionary. That's what they've done. Something yes. revolutionary. Moving ahead, the penalty also goes on to 250 crores to data processors. If the information have been has been leaked intentionally okay, for the purpose of, uh, you know, making wrongful gains. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, the penalty further extends to 250 CRs. Okay. So, that's the entire... If, if it's unintentional? Intentional, unintentional, for the purpose of uh, wrongful gain, wrongful loss, whichever purpose, it was your responsibility to keep it sorted, compliant, recorded, marked. There are certain checks and parameters, right? How you have to right. keep your data, store your data, move your data. Yeah, yeah. So, if you have the data, right. you have to be responsible for it. What if you get hacked? Even in that case, why did you not take the precautions? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Makes right. sense. So if you, if your systems are so uh, vulnerable, you better not keep it with you. Of course. And there is a limitation also as to how long you can keep the data. Hmm. As and when the work is done, you have to delete it. Oh, okay. You cannot keep it in your system forever. Okay. Okay. The, 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 until unless the legal requirement exists, you keep it with you further. If it doesn't exist, you have to remove it. But the law has surprisingly created some exceptions. Like? The government entities are exempted from all of this. That's convenient. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was good enough, right? Yeah, yeah. But they went on to say that certain data, uh, that certain data fiduciaries, hmm. which can be either private companies hmm. or startups. Yeah. Dealing with volumes of data. I'm quoting the act. Yeah. What volume? High volume or low volume has not been categorized. Volume. Can also be exempted. That's a backdoor. Okay. Let's, 
not get into that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the government has made certain conveniences for itself, like it does in every other law, and the lawyers are not very appreciative about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, this is just one kind of loophole that I am I have been able to pick up. Mm -hmm. There will be many. The act is exhaustive. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what we understand from how it works is that a lot of recommendations. So first time it was almost passed. But then there was a joint committee pro proposed, mm -hmm. joint commission, and then a second round of revision went that, okay, the, the law that has been tabled mm -hmm. in the parliament has to, you know, go for another round of revision. Yeah. So it went back. I think it was back in 2018 or 2019. Okay. Right? That long. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So actually, I think it's been starting. We started the situation since 2005, put to Swami judgment, wherein the Aadhaar card issue was out that the personal information of everybody is getting leaked and okay. that the personal information is uh, connected to a right to privacy, mm -hmm. fundamental rights of every individual mm -hmm. and that how it is getting impacted directly. Mm -hmm. That's where it started. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it has been, it has been developing since then. Okay. Okay. So th it has, it has been a long journey. And 2019, again, when they thought that has been finally drafted and curated, again, a joint committee proposal was suggested and it re went for a further recommendation revamping and then they have come up with this finally. And 2023, August, this law has been passed. Yeah. But I think furthermore, there with lawyers getting into it, uh, doing some more brainstorming, you know, uh, reading the uh, laws across the globe, understanding the differences, and actually feeling the loopholes, okay, when the backdoor channels will be used and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, optimized as per the requirements, right. then you'll feel the difference. And then again, there will be, a, you will see an amendment to this very soon. Okay, okay. Right. So since the passing of the law, what are some of the most common challenges that you've seen companies facing? So a new company, you know, startups, ecosystem, they don't understand. Firstly, the, the law is full of jargons. Yeah, of course. Yes. It is full of jargons, legal jargons. Yeah. Right. Lawyers in itself, lawyers themselves are having trouble to understand, okay, what is a data fiduciary? Even yeah. I was like, okay, I need to understand. Though the uh, definition clarifies it, yeah. but even the definition is full of jargons. Okay. So by which I want to say that this needs a formal training. Yes. This needs a formal training and application and implementation by way of a formal training, a formal channel. The government has just created a law. Hmm. It has not created any portals or systems for assistance right. for implementation. And then you are saying that you will impose this huge, huge penalty for non-performance. Right, right, right. But what are you what are you doing to make them compliant? Right. 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 So in the broader structure, how this, how this entity functions, how the nation fun functions, we have executive, legislative and the ju judiciary, right? Mm -hmm. One who makes the law, hmm. one who implements the law and one who takes care if the law is broken. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the three structures of the democracy. Based on that, when you create a law, where is the implementing body? You yes. have created a redressal body. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You have created a body to impose fines. Yeah. But where is the body that is implementing it? Yeah. What are the channels? What are the government helplines mm -hmm. for implementation? So government these days is running heavily on taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. And they just want, they're creating huge penalties, trying to extract more and more because yes, there is a lot of money in the market, mm -hmm. though hidden. Yeah, okay. yeah. So they are just creating channels. So yes, startups and uh, uh, companies in the tech sector will face and are facing problem of implementation of these regulations. Mm -hmm. Right. How to, you know, keep it protected, how to move the data, uh, what to do, what not to do, which compliance applies to us. Yeah. What do I do to take care of children's data? Right. Oh, I've got this much of data. Yeah. How yeah. do I use it? Yeah. Right. Can I do this or not do this? So who will give them this understanding? So at Fathom Legal, we help you understand <laughs> these, <laughs> these queries. Okay. So for anything related to such, please feel free to reach us out. Absolutely. Please, please reach out to them. So uh, there are certain entities, okay, legal entities themselves who are, uh, you know, providing training twice a month just to make you compliant with these laws. Oh. Yeah. They're literally feeding in the brains of the employees how you can move your data, how you can store your data, how to segregate your data, how to mark your data. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we were, we are also developing a model to... So, do, do you... How, how important is training employees in, in this regard? It is very employ, important because, you know, the employer-employee relationship is a fiduciary relationship. Okay? okay. So, anything which an employee does, 
you save it in their system locally or you give them the access complete control they take it out and sell it outside correct right? yeah now you are a ofo for the data fiduciary for example right? yeah yeah and somebody does this in your organization the liabilities will be on the owners right right absolutely and you can't keep running around and chasing people yes so the overall impact is huge no matter wherever you have reached how far you've reached how honestly you've worked hmm. the system is going to collapse for you right right so impact is huge and when there is a breach okay i don't know if you've read that recently dominos had a data breach yes yeah yeah this is very popular 180 million 180 million yeah million. then again air india 4.5 million yeah it affects people hmm. at multiple levels so there is this entire segment of injuries defined under the act they called injuries injury or damages okay okay so then there is mental damage mental injury yeah yeah reputational damage yeah financial loss yeah right sometimes emotional loss of course yeah so all of this has to be comp- uh, compensated it can go to any extent hmm so if you are able to understand the depth of it the intensity of it it would be huge and if you're not able to understand then nothing like it <laughs> makes sense you can leave it as it is wherever you are Like, but still, like you know, the end. Uh, thing is, get professional help. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you're able to do it yourself, go ahead. But no, if you get stuck, then eventually you will need professional help. So why not before? Okay. So what what are some things that companies can proactively do, right? So in order to not be affected by. It? So first step for companies to do is you know read the law, okay. Or get a lawyer. No. Okay. Second thing is train your employees. Right. training is essential because you know these uh, you have suppose let's understand you're a bpo mm-hmm. okay you have thousands of people working right and the kind of employees with the kind of qualification those people have they would definitely not be able to understand the responsibility so sensitization is important yes impact assessment is important mm. and once you do that the explanation to them is important so it is your responsibility as an organization to sensitize the people that you know anybody's health information yeah anybody's financial information or anybody's relationship status what impact could it create mm. okay for you it might not be something of benefit right but if it gets leaked yeah. you don't know in what many ways people can use their creativity to get it to their use absolutely hackers do that all the time yeah and they are running a good business out of it <laughs> right so sensitization is very important so first step that they can do is training and training. sensitization okay. second is by, after the training and sensitization use that training to optimize and safeguard your uh, systems and processes in the manner not segregation marking it flagging it how do you move the data mm-hmm. what servers you use yeah right yeah. how do you move them internationally right even that has been laid down under the law hmm. if at all it is needed hmm. so all that has to be taken care of while running your business okay so l- let's get back into that moving data internationally part how again what are the steps to correctly do it so the government in the act sorry not the government the act has not laid down any steps or procedure okay. it has just said that uh, there is no prohibition on it there is no prohibition on it there is no so they made it abundantly clear that there is no prohibition on it you can move the data out but again whatever steps that are required locally are to be implemented at the international level also okay but how, how do they enforce it internationally They don't have then we have again int- no 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 okay. <laughs> we have we have public international law private international law taking okay. care of our uh, uh, cross border jurisdictions everything is under uh, is covered that's not a problem okay interesting so if at all you breach internationally yeah. also yeah i don't want to for the record please. not you yeah. if at all anybody <laughs> breaches <laughs> okay yeah. uh, you will have those liabilities and penalties to pay if you pay that then you will be covered under the penal laws we catch hold of you somewhere or the other yeah we catch hold of anyone who breaches that somewhere or the other yeah. <laughs> are, are there any predictions or anything that you see coming in addition to this in the future related to privacy or compliance a lot has to be developed okay nothing on ai or web3 the space is dark right right absolutely right mm-hmm. and the tok so 2022 was 2022 was all about web3 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 yeah, yeah. everywhere you go we are into web3 you know blockchain blockchain yeah. blockchain that's no, so generative yeah. yeah 
now you know all about ai ml ai ml i will integrate ai into this ai into that right. people don't even understand what it is so many of them yeah but those who are techies they have gone way ahead right, right? Yeah. of course the legislature is not able to catch up right right we are still working on cyber security yeah right it should have been done 20 years ago <laughs> absolutely yeah laptops were there since when since when people are using credit cards yeah. since when uh, you know hospitals are using data yeah. and selling it left right and center right. a lot has is yet to come right so we need more and more industry experts mm -hmm. more and more legal luminaries actually into the profession <clears throat> who can understand and give generous suggestions to the government mm -hmm. on the development of jurisprudence on this issue got it what exactly would be the jurisdiction i'm not sure yeah. oh yeah sure right. interesting that you brought up ai now like coming back to uh, like you know copyrights right there are a lot of cases of ai being used to generate content like you know you know in uh, okay let me give you an example right? there's a very popular singer right and that singer's whole flow lyrics and music has been replicated by ai the singer had nothing to do with it whose intellectual property is that <laughs> the okay. law the law is not developed jurisdiction is not developed okay you say that ai has done the breach okay yeah ha huh. yeah it has done the breach they what have, in that case yeah what who who takes the liability right right who takes the liability you can't go back to the owner and said oh he developed the software right even in the self driven cars this was the case it's a very old case okay if the okay. self driven cars goes on the road and you know there's an accident there's an accident yeah who takes the liability yeah so there is a lot of these are all gray sectors yeah, and yeah these yeah. are all gray sectors where the jurisdiction is not defined and you might not be able to seek any remedy out of such cases so far correct, correct. So the people who are getting um hampered by such technologies it is something which is uh, is yet to be highlighted and you know uh, worked around on it legally okay not much developed on this space right. i mean you will keep on doing litigation court will you know uh, on the blanket surface uh, will penalize the person who created the software yeah impose some penalty and that's it but that's not the rationale behind it because you cannot stop the technology from evolving right right you can't yeah you can't do that hmm. okay and it is required it is helping us also yeah it is aiding us also so again yeah, there there are certain parameters that have to be created certain checks and balances that have to be created okay you can do this you cannot do this right. you can venture into this space you cannot venture into this yeah. space yeah. this is good for the society this is bad for the society so recently i saw a case wherein you've heard of scams where yeah. people you know ask money okay i'm in trouble can you yeah, send me yeah, 5k yeah, yeah, of course so this guy was uh, he was taken aback like uh, why is she asking me money suddenly yeah. so he said i will only give you the money if so he, she was a very good friend a close friend huh. so he said i'll only give you the money if you come on video call video. i want to see you oh okay i see where this is going okay yeah and she said yeah sure and she did the video call and she was exactly that similar person and that was an ai and he agreed and he transferred around 70k yeah okay and that was the first case yeah which went public it went viral so how do you stop these scams are going multifold and i would say that the entire scam industry mm -hmm. these people the jamtara event it's all because of data leak only yeah of course what else yeah. and they have become such a big industry yeah untampered uncashed yeah and you're not able to catch hold of them so data privacy laws are extremely extremely important but there's a long way to go got it for india to catch up in my own personal capacity what can i do or what can anyone do to increase uh, to be more private to be more safeguarded about my own properties my assets firstly while you are downloading apps let's start with phone okay since it has become a part of our bodies now right. we don't move around without it yeah while you are downloading apps do not just randomly give consent 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 agree 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 yeah, but who who can read all that you don't need to read all but uh -huh. you need to understand suppose you are uh, downloading an app yeah suppose and won't name the app again uh, an app which helps you commute from one place to another Okay. It rhymes with uh, rumor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hmm. So that app doesn't need access to your gallery. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 Just use that basic sense and deny that access. Yes. That app does doesn't need access to your uh, uh, directory, phone directory, right? right doesn't right. need access to a lot of other apps, right. your banking apps, etc. so you have to just be conscious enough and be a little patient of what you're dealing with because you're dealing with technology which right. is ahead of you right right right, right 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 so that is one word of caution don't just randomly press consent because while you're signing the bank forms 
in the loan documents you are ready to uh, read that small text but why don't you understand that this one device has right. your entire life stored into it absolutely yeah yeah okay yeah. so it is as important and as precious as any of your other financial issues or transactions or liabilities so don't just randomly go on to pressing these consent buttons deny everything non essential deny everything deny everything and just agree to only that thing which barely makes your app workable yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. like for swiggy i have stopped everything hmm. okay i only give permission tracking permission only when i place an order right right allow tracking yeah. only for one time yeah yeah you can do that also for yeah. particular so again technology is evolving for your favor also and for the favor of, on the other side you need to know how do you use it particularly again and then again when you doing banking transactions on your laptop mm-hmm. right try to use the virtual keyboard yeah we always yeah. ignore that right Right, you always right, ignore that right. so that it's it's there for a particular purpose yes you might not know what malware or what ransomware is there in your system yeah especially when you're using it uh, on a public system or right. on somebody else's system right. use the virtual keyboard yes that is one suggestion yeah that's it that's yes. all i have <laughs> to to give you so far just be careful be intelligent yeah, do not accept anything that you don't understand yeah uh, don't don't uh, you know the idea okay technology you can trust it i can understand we can trust the technology but not mm-hmm. to the extent that it infringes us and takes uh, important things of us away right. so just be uh, sensible just be conscious just be alert mm-hmm. of what you're dealing with and i think you should be good to go so you don't see everybody getting scammed why are old people getting scammed because yeah because they're the lack most vulnerable yeah most yeah there was lack of know how right housewives getting scammed right. kids getting scammed right lack of know they don't know they don't uh, use their prudence they don't use their judgment you gullible yeah too gullible yeah. you and i difficult to get scammed okay right. yeah uh, we have a good time with the scammers okay yeah. tell me more i i enjoy those conversations <laughs> very much <laughs> so recently i listed an ad on ola okay and immediately within 30 seconds i get a call like a message this is sold you immediately put it out on from the app mm-hmm. i was like okay mm-hmm. i was like wow this app is amazing yeah. so this was my first interaction with not ola it was olex yeah. yeah it was my first interaction with olex it's like is this so cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> then he says give me your number i gave him my number yeah then he calls me immediately huh. i was like okay he's like why don't you put it off the listing huh. i was like i've just put it on the list yeah he's like no i'm sending you the money it's like huh. okay send me the money so is this the whatsapp number i said yeah. yes so he's <laughs> He sends me a QR code. <laughs> He sends me a QR code yeah. on which one rupee is written. Yeah. He says I've sent you one rupee just to check if it's going. Yeah. Oh, you do one thing is scan this QR. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <it's> okay. <laughs> okay, I got to come. Tell me where you are. I'll put you in cash. <laughs> oh my God! So I had some really good time exploring Olex and the kind of people I met there. Yeah. so all of that again so olex also i do not give it's it's full of scammers that particular app is full of scammers mm. so you have to be very careful so i think the image is tarnished right still i ventured into it and tried exploring but i did, did get my deal okay, okay. what the purpose Chill purpose was served yeah so yeah you just have to be wise enough on how you how you going to use your things so these, these tools will be ever evolving right mm-hmm. and but you need to know how to use it when to use it and when to stop right understand the red flags yeah be a little vigilant that's it it's a perfect way to end the podcast i think <laughs> it was lovely having you here how do people reach out to you how do they get in touch with fathom or ishita yeah so fathom legal we are based out of delhi and bangalore and uh, you can reach out to us at support s u p p o r t at the rate fathomlegal.com and i will ask angad to put on my further details it'll all be there in the description all the links are right there Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Like this.